Good morning. Fred Wagner here, Papa's Painting Tips again. And I uh, thought I'd take a little different approach here. I thought I would uh, take you through, through almost a whole process and uh, show you a drawing lesson plus taking a concept into a full-fledged painting. Um, now, I've got a self-portrait up here, but I'm not doing a self-portrait. I'm just using my own image as a base reference for positioning and uh, an image. But I can take it and translate uh, <coughs> and make my little changes that I want to do. So, uh, hopefully this will help uh, people understand how drawing interacts and being able to draw rather than just being able to trace off of uh, projectors or drawing um, apps. Uh, I'm not against them, don't get me wrong. I, I do use the drawing apps, I do use projectors. Um, however, in this case, uh, I want to show you how Enhancing your drawing skills and your ability to, to perceive what you're drawing and painting will enhance your final product. And uh, you can use the projector to start with. That's, that's absolutely fine and okay. But I think with the knowledge of, a, a basic knowledge of drawing skills and improving those skills will also benefit once you use the projector and translating the image and uh, recreating shadows, shapes, and forms. So, let's get started. I've, I've got my drawing pad set up here. I've got my iPad up here on my holder. I got just a couple pencils because I'm not doing a real, re de real detailed sketch. I'm going to start out with an H, uh, a hard lead, and then maybe add in a little shapes and shadows. Once I get my base drawing done, then I will uh, take a picture of what I, I'm wanting to do and transfer that onto my painting surface. That way I don't make any errors uh, at the end stage. I also got a gum eraser here. I've got other erasers I may use as I'm drawing this out. But let's get started on this. Um, what you got here in a, in a portrait is the shape of the face. Let me uh, close my back shades here. I hate to lose my lighting, but it's interfering with the picture on the iPad. I've got my overhead light. All right. Now you'll probably be able to see it a little bit better. All right. You can see the shape of the face is an oval. All right, egg shape. It's usually rounder on top, or uh, larger on top than the bottom, but there's foreshortening going on. And what's meant by foreshortening is uh, in the part of the image that is closer to the camera or to the, the viewer seems larger than parts that are further away. The hands seem extremely large because they're further or closer to the camera in comparison to the face. That's, that's all got to do with your perspective and, uh, and foreshortening. So, the start of a face, there's a baseline that goes up and down the center of the face. The face is the oval. And then there's smaller sections within that are shapes. So if we want to start this drawing, okay, let's, uh, let's say... You want to use some kind of measurement, uh, what you can do, and you got to stay consistent. If you wanted to use the pencil uh, like this as a measuring tool and then put it up here, you know, you could do that. But I'm not doing figure drawing. I don't want it to be that small. So I'm just going to guesstimate to get everything in. Uh, the shape of the hands are... Uh, like an isosceles, not an isosceles uh, triangle. It's like a parallelogram, okay? 
So we're going to take and we're going to draw in the face that I want to use. So we're going to do a straight kind of curve line because this is like a quarter view. So you're, you've got a curve here in the face. And mind you, I am not doing an exact duplicate of my face. So there's your center line for the face where the nose, the center of the mouth, and the chin will run. All right, and you can just sketch it. And now the face also, like I said, is an egg shape. Now in this case, the chin's closer, so we're gonna make that chin, line, chin a little bit larger. And most of these guidelines are gonna be out, all right? Roughly like that. Okay. I'm just making my shape a little nicer. And let's bring that up a little bit more to more match this drawing. All right. Now, generally, you're you've got the upper circle of the face normally, all right, and the eyes come right in the middle. But being that my the head is tilted back in this case, the center line runs more like this. Um, that plane is now shifted upward. So you're going to have the eyebrow line actually rise in the upper part of that circle. Then the eyes uh, are going to be just below that about a half an eye width okay and now the nose uh, the base of the nose is about right at the bottom of that circle line the lip and the nose so in this case because of the tilt of the head it's gonna be small uh, a little bit higher up because the nose is now up so this is the bottom of the nose this is the top of the nose and then the mouth Okay, you've got your nose, then you've got your upper lip, or the base of the nose, I should say. And your upper lip is running a little bit closer, right about that. And you got that same, you keep the same curves, okay, because they're on the same plane. The chin is right in here, okay. Your nose is shaped into a triangle and then down from the nose all right your eyes are actually it's a round ball for the eye the uh, you don't have to draw this in I'm just doing for position to get the eye get them about the same all right this is just for reference all right and then, like I said, the eyebrows are up in here. The forehead, and I've got the hair. I'm going to be changing the hair into more of a wavy pattern. The hair is not important at this part. Okay, something like that. Then your ears generally fall on the same line the upper part of the ear goes on that same line so that your ear would start here all right and then the base of the ear falls with the base of the nose so if you follow that curve along the bottom of the ear comes about here and over this side the hands going to be in the way there all right now we can take and we're going to just lightly sketch in the eye. The eyelid follows the curve of the eyeball behind. All right. And that's generally, all right, in between the eye, the width of the eye, then the second eye, which starts the third eyelid. The third eyelid. <laughs> 
the position of the other eye. Right. They're in there. All right. Then you've got the shape of the upper eyelid in this case. And then being that the head is tilted back, you've got the bottom right about here. All right. The nose we're going to start out, there's shadow on the nose. We don't want to draw definite lines right now. We just want to put in shapes of shadows. All right. Then we're going to follow this. Down for the nostrils. All right. And then the curve of that nostril. And pay attention to your positionings of everything. Alright. Now we're going to make a big bushy mustache on me. Well, it already is bushy. So, alright. It's following that curve. The mustache bean is going to overlap the bottom edge of that nostril. Alright. This would be the center of uh, in between the I forget what you call that that part, but the upper part of the lip. Alright. And then we're going to put the upper lip in following that curve. And now the bottom lip come out below this lower lip. We're going to make a fuller beard than I actually have for this drawing. Like I said, this is just going to be the reference. Okay, got the beard. We're going to make it a little bit longer, a little more flowing. I do not have a full beard, unfortunately. I wish I did. I cannot grow one. That is true. All right. and the cheekbone, the shape of the skull comes in like this. Cheekbone's here, and it's riding high because of the tilt of the head. Okay, again, following the same across. Alright, and then you got your jaw over here. In this case, it's going to be beard. Right. Now, you got your eyebrows. And like I said, this is just a reference. You don't have to draw in every hair at, at this point or anything. comes in, shape of the skull, it comes in like this and then it goes the eyebrow and the eye socket. You gotta you gotta imagine inside that that skull in there. Alright. Lighting's gonna be coming from above on this painting. Like the glory of God shining from above down onto you. So you've got your shadow under here. In this case, we're just going to kind of lightly sketch in that shadow. Okay. Then this shadow over here. Now, let's make sure my eye is proportionate. 
Alright, this has got to come a little bit further over. Now, not everything on a person is symmetrical. And symmetrical means the same on both sides. Okay. Now, I'm at a stage I want to put in these hands. So, your hands... Uh, I'm going to draw the outline of the reference for the hands. Fingers are separated. There's the curve on the top to set up that. Right. And you say, you're drawing oven mitts. <laughs> uh, yeah, kind of. And then this hand, I'm going to change the position. I want it in a little more. I'm going to keep the same direction. Now the hands are at the same distance, so we want to keep them roughly at the same point. And I'm following the basic shapes of the hands. And now the fingers are just several cylinders on top of each other. Okay, there's one, second digit, third digit, and then this one starts off here. And then we got a little foreshortening here, so they're not perfectly symmetrical in our viewpoint. They're kind of foreshortened also. Now you can you can improvise a little bit in here if you want to uh, like I said I'm just lightly sketching these in. We can always alter this is just the drawing phase. That's the first digit, then the second digit, and then the third comes down here. Yeah, I think I'm a little too small. Let's go bigger. Okay, the nails are in here. Paying attention to the actual reference a little more. And this is just to get the basic sketch. I'm using an HB uh, lead, if, in case you're wondering. Okay, and this digit is coming almost equal to the middle finger. And you see my reference, I, I'm not right on here. Not at all. So, let's go in and correct this. I got my spacing off and I got my size off. Let's do it from this side. Um, curve of this finger. Digit. Right, this finger overlaps, and it's actually about the same height as that finger. And yep, yeah, right in about the same.
Now this can vary from person to person, the length of the digits of the fingers. So be prepared. Now we can get this one here and it's actually lower than that center finger. Not a lot. It's about a half a digit lower. So let's let's raise this one a little bit. Right. And this one can go up a little bit. Okay, now we're now we're cooking. As you develop your drawing, you can make corrections within it. And the pinky. Okay, this finger comes down. The knuckles right here. Being that the hands are going to be in the foreground, you want them uh, quite accurate. Nothing worse than making an inaccurate drawing. Now, truthfully, I could take this and I could, you know, use that tracing app to get these sizes right. But I just wanted to give you a little bit of a drawing lesson out of this. Tip of that finger. Okay. You can take out these. Not necessary no more, they're just guidelines. Okay, 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 okay. Now this is a nail bed right here. This nail comes up. Now this picture is going to be a picture of someone worshiping the Lord. And so, as if you couldn't tell that already. His pinky's a little fatter, I guess it's closer. This nail is a little bit straighter because the finger's pointing at you a little more. And we got the curve here. And this upper knuckle here. Now, like I said, I've changed the position of this hand a little bit, drawn in closer so the proportions are a little bit different than my reference. And this, I feel, can, uh, this is a little larger. And over to this finger. Let's take out that middle reference. And the nail beds here. And this one comes up a little higher. Hands are tricky to draw. It's not really easy. You just watch your placements and proportions. Alright. Okay. And 
and the last nail again is more to this now this is just a Strathmore drawing paper it's nothing there's quite a bit of tooth to it I should have done the H uh, first because these lines are getting too thick, too soft, so, too soft. <laughs> right. Now we got the base for that one. Let's do in this hand. Uh, truthfully, this finger comes over. We got to make it somewhat in proportion to the other one because it's a little bit closer and the angle is towards you. The fingertips are closer towards you. And I'm not putting my ring in this picture. So. Knuckles are about here. This thumb comes out about here. This finger's up. And then this finger. Mm. Something ain't looking right. I think I made it too wide. Yeah, that, that'll work. That'll work. I like what that's doing there. Make it more like the hands coming towards you a little more. That gives room for the beard to be in there. This fingertip actually is going to be almost as high as that middle finger only because of the angle of the hand. And this is the thumb just sticking out a little bit. Alright, that's not bad. And that, uh, this curve comes around here like this. It's kind of right on the same plane as that, okay? And then this finger here, and this is going there. This has got to be a little bit fatter on the top, this finger. And then the palm of the hand, like, that, like so. Let's round this palm out a little bit more, like that. Right, now we're gonna just lightly put in these nails. Okay. It's very sketchy, so. Don't get discouraged right now. It, it wouldn't be worth being discouraged. Because you got a lot of room to correct things still. One of the biggest mistakes people make in their drawing skills is they look more at their drawing than their reference. If you look more at your reference, you will have a more accurate drawing. 
three quarters of your observation should be your reference and one quarter on your actual drawing. Your hand will begin to follow what your eye is seeing. as you draw it. All right. And then these knuckles, uh, let's see, the knuckle on this comes right about there on this finger. And then we've got the second knuckle or the first knuckle on this hand and then this knuckle is following that same plane and then this knuckle, it would be curving back down towards the thumb a little bit as it goes around. Right. And then this knuckle is more to the edge, so it's a little less than over here. So, because you're you're seeing the side inside of the finger here. Now we're going to do the, the neck, here's the ear, like I was saying. The neck comes off of the jaw, it's a little bit inside. Center of the neck down here, following that same plane down. This would branch out going over into the shoulders. <coughs> now we're going to make uh, probably a little longer flowing hair. I don't know if I'm going to, I don't know if I want to put a hood on my uh, drawing here. bit more wavy hair. Right. Let's keep this, the forehead coming out over here. I don't want the hair overlapping that. I want a little bit. Now this is what I do. I begin to define my drawing, the shadows, and I'm following the shape of the shadows. I'm using the edge of the pencil at first, just to start creating that shadow. And there's a shadow in here, there's a shadow on the bottom, under the bottom lid. This is still the H pencil. And again, like I said, I'm going to have a light source above. So my shadows aren't necessarily, they're not coming from the bottom, they're coming from the top. So you're more shadowed in here. I'm going to put a crease. I'm going to make a couple extra wrinkles on me. Not as much. I don't have as many wrinkles unless I'm in a ticked off mood and I'm scowling. <laughs> but I'm going to add a couple here. Make myself a little bit older. All right. light source from above. Remember that. And then we're going to shade in shadow on the bottom. 
I don't know if you've ever seen the picture of Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, kind of similar to the lighting effect there. Shadow in these nostrils. Start light on your shadows. Don't go dark right off the bat. That gives you room to make changes without erasing big, huge differences. Okay, and then cheekbone comes in. And we're going to do a little bit of shadowing here. Now, underneath that lip, there's going to be a good, strong shadow. And I know what you're thinking. How can we get an actual drawing to look exactly like the picture if you're not following your own picture reference? Sorry. I understand what you're saying, but this is concept to canvas. I'm going to, yeah, I can put in this ear. Ear comes down here more. You're only going to see a little bit of this here. And then under here, there's going to be quite a bit of shading. Okay, the, this mustache is going to come. There's going to be a good amount of shading under the edge of this mustache coming off that lip. Right. Bottom side of that mustache is going to be shadowed. The top will be highlighted. side of this beard. We're going to have a good strong dark. Alright, let's uh, do a little more detail in here, just a little. makes a world of difference when you follow a reference. Now, this underside of the nose is shadowed because the lighting's hitting above.
this side's a lot darker. edge right here. Now of course drawing larger would have made it a lot easier to put in little fine details and right now I am not real real concerned with ultimate fine details. This is just going to be my reference to set up for my painting. Once I get into the painting then I will make my changes let's just make sure I got the proportions right Let's intensify this under this cheekbone. You gotta imagine that skull inside creating the shape. And see how I'm I'm not drawing little lines. I am creating this by shadows and the values of my shadows creating the depth through those values I got some funky looking ears man big fat ears This, I know in the picture it's just my cheek, but in this, it's this beard that I'm going to have. This is behind the ear. shape of that. Do a nice strong shadow underneath this. I don't know if you've noticed but I do kind of work in an overall rather than just one little part and then expand. It'd be different if I was working straight from a reference uh, that I could just build around slowly the whole thing but right now since I'm doing this from concept I want to build my values all over so I get a proportionate This is where the advantage of having a reference to follow. On these wrinkles, you'll have you're going to have the shadow. The upper part of the wrinkle underneath will be brighter. Okay. 
And let's uh, let's kind of follow the same part in here because I like my little bit of creases in my face. And the Lord said, what man ever hated his own body? None. We feed our body. We glorify our body. We take care of our body. So when someone says they hate themselves, they don't really hate themselves. They take care of themselves. They eat. Now one of the issues uh, with this, on this drawing paper, is I don't have the luxury of these fine details, because this paper is not smooth. And I've got closed eyes here. under here is this cheekbone we can take a little darker pencil make this a little bit easier to put in this shadow and let's let's actually take the mustache and overlap it over that lip going to be I'm making this image of someone that's back in biblical days almost like it's uh, maybe John the Baptist or not John the Baptist but John or Peter praying on Pentecost maybe Praying for the Holy Spirit to descend. This lip is going to be a little bit higher.
And that you hear is my dishwasher telling me I am done. under here, under this beard. It's all shadowed. shadow. You're not going to see as much. It's in between those fingers. And then again over here. Right, over here is a lot stronger shadow. Now I moved this hand so it's this finger is in a different position than it is. And I did that on purpose. Now I got to stay consistent here. Come on. Alright, this is gonna be the hair. Now, right now, I'm just putting my own personality, my own style into this to get my reference for what I want. Alright, these fingers, yeah, let's see, I think I'll we'll just do the HB for now. I'm just going to put in a generic shadowing on it for now. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. But this is how you build your image when you're drawing from scratch. Shapes of the shadows. And build it slowly. Paying attention to your shadows and your values. Now what I can do from this this point here, since I got I, I really kind of like my base drawing here that I'm gonna work from. I could take a take a photo of this now since I got my positions in and start working on a tracing uh, through the tracing app and put in all my little details to make this my own because right now it, all the details ain't gonna matter because this is not gonna be my finished artwork like I said, this is just a reference. I've got my original image so I can get details of what I want to put in there. Let's do this. Maybe like the hair's coming up from here. And 
pan. <laughs> Look at my pan. Dirty, dirty. Okay, now over this side. And this is how you work out a basic sketch for uh, reference. This is by no means a full on drawing. This is just the idea. Concept to painting, like I said. See, the Lord gives us all talent. And how we choose to use that talent makes a difference. We can use it to bring glory to Him. We can use it to bring glory to ourselves. Much better to build up your treasures in heaven where moth, moth and rust can't corrode and destroy. What I'm doing in here, I'm comparing this nail to this nail, making sure I'm proportionate. And the size of the fingers, the direction of the fingers, I'm going to come in and clean up a little edges so that the hands are more visible. This thumb is going to be shadowed. Okay, let's go to a little darker pencil here. The shadow over here, shadow coming down here, and then we got the knuckle off of this hand here and here. Here, this is coming down. This is a very loose sketch. This whole back side of the hand is shadowed. Alright, now let me get a different eraser here. And we're just going to clean up this edge here so it'll stand out against the shadow. This will pick it up a little bit. So when I redraw it, Same thing over here, your lightning's on the top edge.
reference line so we don't need it. Okay, uh, not gonna do too much more with this. Like I said, this is just the concept image. Doing this ear a little bit, maybe. And then do the shadow behind. Paying attention to where the other earlobe is under here I'm doing the same over here I'm gonna actually curl the hair under right here and bring this finger out in the open more kinda like that Clean this up a little bit from my hand. We got a good start. And this came from my, uh, my reference photo of myself. And I've altered it enough that now it doesn't really look like me. Okay, well, that's, that's all I'm going to do on this, I think. Uh, to start to get this thing rolling to give myself a, a good basic start proportions are there side we're gonna darken that in a little bit all right there's our there's our concept drawing and uh, I'm hoping 
this is going to work out the way I wanted. But we went from that image there that I took. I used it as our base reference. And that's our concept drawing for my next painting that I'm going to do. All right. And maybe maybe the uh, title of this painting is going to be With These Hands I Shall Praise. I don't know. That's kind of a long title. All right. Hope you enjoyed this little bit. Uh, it's only a, it, it's, it's a quick drawing, very sketchy, uh, but I think it's got God's hand written all over it. Okay, and I will add to this, this is going to become the start of the airbrush painting that I will be doing of this, and I hope you stick around to watch it all.